Thank you, Emanuele, for the nice uh, introduction. Uh, I will talk about uh, photovoltaic power generation now casting, uh, cloud type classification forecast through satellite data and imagery. So the framework of this research is related to the expected growing number of uh, photovoltaic power plant and uh, renewable energy sources in general uh, systems. And uh, you know that uh, sudden variation in uh, weather conditions uh, strongly affect the power production from uh, renewable energy sources. Uh, and more in detail, uh, when dealing with the photovoltaic system, this is related to clouds moving, uh, which are affecting the solar radiation. So in national electrical grids, sudden power inflows uh, are uh, raising issues of stability and also reliability of the grid. And on a smaller scale, uh, with the deal when dealing with uh, microgrids, uh, they are affecting uh, the dispatchability and uh, the management. So now I'm simplifying a lot. Uh, usually the two strategies we are adopting, uh, we insert uh, battery energy storage system into the grid uh, or backup generators. Uh, however, an accurate short-term solar radiation forecast is still needed. If we consider, for instance, the comparison among, among the most commonly adopted models uh, here, and we uh, consider the mean absolute error, we compare the persistent method, uh, the artificial neural network, and a robust persistence. The persistence also is called the naive persistent, and it is assuming that uh, the expected forecast sample is uh, the same we have now by adding uh, a time lag the robust persistence uh, instead is a mix of uh, this naive persistence with uh, a deterministic uh, or some, uh, for instance, the solar angle or some uh, physical parameters we have in the model. Uh, but before five minutes, uh, the results uh, of these three models is more or less comparable. If we consider longer times uh, in the forecast, uh, we could uh, rely on uh, artificial neural network or robust persistence for accurate forecasts. However, the persistence, the naive persistence, is failing when predicting sudden ramps or drops of solar irradiance. So this is the red curve, which is uh, just a uh, uh, time-lagged uh, uh, curve of the blue one. So the main target uh, is uh, to set a simplified methodology for the 15 minutes ahead forecast uh, of sudden variations in the uh, solar radiance uh, on a given location through satellite images. Therefore, we built a cloud, uh, dynamic cloud model, which is able to detect uh, the clouds uh, affecting uh, the solar radiation between uh, the sun and the given location where our photovoltaic module is. Uh, and uh, the cloud type classification has been uh, uh, analyzed with different training layout uh, by comparing uh, reduced uh, satellite data classifications. And uh, we compared uh, artificial neural network random forest uh, uh, in their performance. So the case study is uh, our solar tech lab uh, in Milano. And uh, we have here the picture from the satellite, uh, which is uh, 18 by uh, 51 pixel, and uh, we have uh, the location of uh, the solar tech lab uh, by highlighted by the red star. Uh, the satellite is providing this picture every 15 minutes, and uh, each pixel is covering a surface of three by five kilometers square rectangle. And we have also a preliminary classification of uh, 19 cloud typologies in classes, in terms of classes. Also, the cloud top altitude is provided by this weather service. We collected uh, uh, approximately 10 days uh, from all over the year, and we coupled this information to our weather station measurements, uh, which is recording every 10, 10 seconds a lot of weather parameters. We consider only these three. The most important uh, is the global horizontal irradiance, uh, which is, uh, of course, related to the power production of uh, the photovoltaic system. Uh, this is a very commonly um, situation when dealing with a photovoltaic system, because uh, usually they provide uh, the uh, photovoltaic system with uh, at least one sensor for measuring the global horizontal irradiance. 
Therefore, the aim was to build uh, this model, this cloud model, which could identify possibly the cloud position, the pixel in the image, which I have shown before, which is mitigating the direct component in the solar irradiance, which is the cloud, uh, the pixel between uh, this uh, uh, sunbeam. So we have the latitude and the longitude of each pixel. We have the cloud typology, which is provided by the uh, weather service. We have the cloud top altitude, which is measured actually by the satellite. We estimated the cloud bottom altitude uh, from literature. And uh, we have also included in the model these two deterministic uh, angle, which are the solar altitude and azimuth, which is uh, the way in which we are detecting the sun position in the sky, actually. This is a deterministic model. And also we added uh, the global horizontal irradiance, uh, which is as well a deterministic model. This is uh, the global horizontal irradiance uh, under clear sky conditions, so without any cloud in the sky. It's the maximum theoretical we, m we might have for a given location. So the result of this uh, is uh, providing us this dynamic cloud model, and we highlighted in red those pixels which are affecting the uh, direct beam in the solar irradiance, and we coupled this information with the clearness index. So we calculated uh, the clearness index, which is basically the ratio between the measured global horizontal irradiance with respect to the clear sky, and uh, we see that uh, all these box plots uh, have uh, this kind of distribution and we were not able to associate directly one given class of the cloud typology to the clearness index, okay? So this is the first uh, uh, highlight. The second one is that some uh, classes are missing in uh, these uh, days we have recorded. Therefore, we were forced to reduce these 19 classes uh, to a reduced number of classes, which is uh, uh, these, uh, these fours. And uh, we made uh, these four classes def defined uh, in a way in which uh, the clearness index distribution were not overlapping one to each other. Uh, and also we uh, added this uh, one hot encode configuration, which is just a replica of this uh, uh, classification with this codification in order to support the, the uh, machine learning techniques we will exploit in a while. In addition, we, we wonder whether it was useful or meaningful to exploit all the picture I have shown before provided by the satellite and we reduced, uh, uh, we introduced four reduced uh, scenarios and we consider for instance, this circle area with a radius of 30 kilometers, and in the center there is our solar club, other two rectangular shapes in our, in our images from the satellite, and the so-called butterfly image. Then, therefore, we consider these three configuration by the five scenarios I have here enlisted by adding uh, the uh, previously mentioned uh, uh, parameters, uh, we have the input data set uh, and uh, via supervised learning, uh, we trained neural networks and random forest in order to forecast uh, the classes uh, here defined uh, of the clearness index. This is a direct connection with the exploitable uh, solar radiation by the sun in order to produce uh, power from renewable energy sources. And this classification, of course, is provided by the bibli bibliography and uh, it is uh, extremely dependent uh, on the location you are considering. If you consider the desertic areas, you probably have to consider different classes, okay? So this is uh, the first uh, model, uh, which is a, a single hidden layer feed forward neural network. In uh, the input is uh, provided by the previously data. This is, uh, these are the features we have employed. We performed the so-called ensemble forecast. We made a very simple average, the basic ensemble method, which is uh, accurate enough. And uh, we included here the softmax uh, uh, transfer function for classification proposal here. 
In addition, we calculate also the optimal number of hidden ne neurons in the, in, uh, in the hidden layer and uh, the uh, number of trees uh, with the out-of-bag algorithm for the random forest. And therefore, here are the results. As we expected, uh, by diminishing the number of classes uh, for the neural network, we improved the accuracy in the forecast. Uh, however, generally speaking, uh, artificial neural network provided uh, uh, less accurate results with respect to random forests. The best result here is provided by the, but the so-called butterfly scenario with a reduced uh, one-hot encode uh, configuration. On the contrary here, the random forest provided the best result uh, with 84% of accuracy and for our task was good enough, let's say. Uh, for the reduced area scenario, the 13 by 7 pixels, with uh, the 19 um, classifying uh, classes, sorry. So, generally speaking, uh, uh, the best classification accuracy was provided uh, by Random Forest, which always scored uh, uh, greater uh, than 81% as a uh, global accuracy. If we consider the best results, for instance here, uh, for the single hidden layer uh, neural network in the butterfly uh, scenario, we have the global accuracy which is 80.3% uh, and uh, the misclassification uh, classes here uh, have uh, a low impact on the overall, which is uh, also reduced uh, if we consider random forest with this uh, rectangular reduced scenario. In conclusion, uh, we can see this is a generic uh, clearness index trend uh, for a daily basis on a daily basis, uh, and uh, the uh, let's say solid uh, light blue area are the actual clearness index classes, uh, while the blue line is uh, the forecasted uh, by machine learning uh, clearness index class. We could see how these uh, red solid dots. Uh, are the so-called edge error because uh, they are close uh, to these uh, two neighbors uh, uh, classes. Therefore, in order to mitigate this uh, problem, we will introduce for sure fuzzy logic or confidence interval, or we will adopt uh, rather than rigid classes, uh, continuous values in the clearness index. So in conclusion, I would say that uh, this uh, simplified methodology uh, successfully uh, included this dynamic uh, cloud model, which was able to detect uh, the sun direction in order to detect the cloud, what, which was actually mitigating the sun uh, beams. We also reduced the cloud type classification by improving uh, the neural network capability, uh, accuracy, sorry, up to 10% uh, in the uh, reduced scenario. And uh, finally, I would say that Random Forest shows the most robust results as we were expecting, uh, mm, scoring, uh, let's say, the highest 84.2% uh, 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 global accuracy with the reduced uh, area 13 uh, multiplied by 7 pixels. So thank you very much for your uh, attention. If you have questions, they are more than welcome.